Traveling is no doubt one of the top ways people like to spend their free time. Because of this, Airbnb has become one of the most popular modern methods to use when searching for a place to stay while vacationing. But sometimes, convenience and affordability bring with it a level of danger or risk that you may not be prepared for. Costa Rica remains one of the world's most popular tourist locations in the world with a rich and vibrant history that reaches all the way back to the year 1502. And on Thanksgiving weekend of 2018, Carla Stefaniak and her sister-in-law, April Burton, set out to experience the green lush lands and blue waters of the historic Caribbean country for themselves. Carla was celebrating her 36th birthday and a trip to Costa Rica was the perfect gift for herself. Both of the girls arrived safely after leaving out from their homes in Florida, and through various pictures posted online to social media, it seemed as if Carla and April were thoroughly enjoying their time there. Carla, like many others, took plenty of photographs of different places they traveled, and kept a strong presence on social media following their journey. After four days, it was time to pack up and get ready for their return trip home. However, Carla planned to stay an extra day to celebrate her birthday while April was set to return home to the U.S. on Tuesday. So at 11.30 a.m. the next day, Carla dropped April off at the Juan Santa Maria International Airport in San Jose. After this, she returned their rental car to the Thrifty Car Rental Agency and took an Uber to a hostel located near the airport around 12.23 p.m. During the ride, her Uber driver offered to take her on a tour of the city, to which Carla gladly agreed. And at 1.04 p.m., she arrived at the Villa Buena Vista in San Jose, where she went inside to change clothes while the driver waited outside. After taking about 45 minutes to change, she then returned to the Uber driver and paid cash to drive her around the city. According to her family, she sent them photos of her various travels throughout the day, showcasing the different places where she also did a bit of shopping. Sometime between 4 and 5 p.m. that evening, the driver dropped her off back at the villa. At 6.30 p.m., Carla sends a photo of where she was staying to her stepsister April and tells her that she had planned to visit a jazz cafe later that evening. But at 6.55 p.m., she sends a message to a WhatsApp group chat with friends telling them that it had begun raining heavily in the area and that the power had now gone out. In her very own words, she described the situation in a text as super sketchy. This could be the first inkling where she felt that something was amiss. Oftentimes, we are warned of possible dangers through what has been described as a sixth sense. Carla had no idea of just how accurate that feeling was. At 7.30 p.m., she called and FaceTimed with a friend until about 9 p.m., also telling him how she had plans to visit the jazz club later that night, but by this time, she was just too tired, likely from her sightseeing ventures carried out earlier that afternoon. During the conversation, she mentioned how she was thirsty, so her friend suggested the idea of possibly boiling water. How exactly she was going to do this with the power out is unknown, but Carla told him that the only thing she could find was a skillet, and that instead she would ask one of the security guards there to buy her a bottle of water. By 8.20 p.m., Carla was still speaking with her friend on the phone when she texted a group chat, I want to go out, but I'm dead tired. And at 9 p.m., during her FaceTime call, her phone died. This would be the last time anyone had contact with Carla Stefaniak. Wednesday, the following day, her brother and stepsister found it strange that she hadn't had any contact with them or responded to the many birthday messages sent to her phone. Their suspicions and worries would go into overdrive when they found that Carla checked in for a flight that was scheduled that afternoon, but she never arrived. It's unclear what time she checked in, but T-Mobile records mysteriously show that Carla's phone briefly connected to the internet for a short time, around 12.17 a.m. in the morning that same day. 
when they contacted the hostel she was staying in, the owner gave them an odd piece of information. The owner claimed that she checked out with her belongings just after 5 a.m. that morning. But her family found this strange, considering her flight wasn't scheduled to take off until later that afternoon. They believed that she wouldn't have checked out early for no reason at all. And unfortunately, they believed that there were no security cameras on their property or street nearby to verify the owner's claims. This was further made unlikely when it was revealed that the Uber driver who drove Carla around the city the day before reported to the authorities that she had asked him to pick her up at 8.30 a.m. that morning to take her to a shopping center, but that she never showed up. Her flight was scheduled to depart at 1.30 p.m. that afternoon, and yet there was nothing to indicate where she had gone since leaving the villa that morning. WhatsApp has a feature that allows you to see when someone has seen or checked recent messages. So family members and friends found it very odd that she hadn't checked any of her messages since 8.50 p.m. the previous night. A GoFundMe page was created by her family in an effort to raise support for finding her whereabouts. They used the money to take flights to Costa Rica and search for themselves. Their first stop was the U.S. Embassy and then the police station before eventually visiting the hostel Caller was staying at. At this point, an official investigation was then launched. Possible lead now in the case of a missing Florida woman who vanished while vacationing in Costa Rica. A body has been found partially buried and wrapped in plastic near an Airbnb where Carla Stefaniak was staying. She was reported missing last week when she didn't return home from her trip. The owner of the Airbnb told the family that Stefaniak left with her bags the next morning at 5 a.m. The flight wasn't until 1.30. She's only 20 or 30 minutes from the airport, so this story doesn't make sense. The family believes Stefaniak was kidnapped. Authorities are still trying to identify that body that they just found. Costa Rican authorities say they found a body buried on the grounds of the Airbnb, and that's where Carla Stefaniak was staying. But there's still no confirmation yet that it's her. Her father and her brother have flown to Costa Rica to search for her, and the family is still hoping they'll find her alive. Hi, welcome me for my birthday. This morning, Carla Stefaniak's family is desperate to find her. It's been a week since they last heard from her. We truly believe she, she's being kidnapped. She and her sister-in-law, April Burton, jetted down to Costa Rica for a quick girls' getaway to celebrate Carla's 36th birthday. Second day, the hot springs. The pair documenting their adventures, relaxing in robes, exploring by moped, taking in the sights. It says April's day, but it's like Carla's day too. April flew home on Tuesday, but Carla planned to stay one more day and return to Miami Wednesday on her birthday. She checked into an Airbnb just outside the capital of San Jose that night, texting with friends, saying it was raining hard and the lights had gone out, writing super sketchy. It's the last time they heard from her, which her brother says immediately raised red flags. She's a person that is always into social media, very communicative, and this is why this is so strange. In what could be a tragic turn, on Monday, Costa Rican investigators found a body outside the Airbnb unit she was renting. Authorities say it was the body of a woman, but can't say if it's Carla until there's an autopsy. Authorities also found what they believe could be blood in the room where she was staying. Her family in disbelief, but not giving up hope. We heard that uh, a body was found. Um, however, we stay um, up optimistic that it's not my sister. We haven't got any confirmation uh, from the authorities. So, Morgan, is the Airbnb cooperating with authorities on this investigation? Well, the attorney that, uh, that is actually representing that property mm -hmm. says they are cooperating with the investigation thoroughly, and they hope that when all the facts are known, that that perpetrator will be brought to justice. Meanwhile, the owners have temporarily closed that Airbnb for vacation rentals. All right, Morgan, thank you so much. This led them to deploy the use of cadaver dogs to search the hostel and nearby surrounding area to uncover any clues to her whereabouts. And on December 3rd, 2018, a canine unit would lead investigators to the deceased body of Carla Stefaniak. She was half clothed and covered with various plastic bags just 200 yards away from the Airbnb. 
Further investigations eventually led them back to a man they had interviewed whose story wasn't quite adding up. According to investigators, his story demonstrated a lot of inconsistencies. This was coupled with a piece of surveillance footage found that directly conflicted with his verbal statements to authorities. This man's name was Bismarck Espinoza Martinez, and he was a security guard that worked on site for the Airbnb who stayed at the adjacent room right next to Carla. His room was number seven and Carla's was number eight. It was also found during this time that Martinez was an illegal immigrant. He was arrested and interrogated before eventually confessing to the murder of Carla Stefaniak. An autopsy later revealed that Carla had received multiple stab wounds and blunt force trauma to the head. The details of what happened the night Carla fell silent are still somewhat of a mystery. But piecing together various stories and text messages, they believe that at some point, maybe Carla did seek out someone to buy her that bottle of water. And that someone was Martinez. Prosecutors say that at some point during their contact, he attempted to force himself onto Carla. And when she refused and fought him off, he retaliated by killing her in a violent rage. They also found that Martinez was the one who had lied and told the owner that she'd taken her things and checked out at 5 a.m. that morning. This case eventually went to trial and in what can only be described as a miscarriage of justice, Martinez was only sentenced to 16 years in prison for the assault and murder of Carla Stefaniak. I'm of the belief that when a person is found guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, the only acceptable sentence is a life for a life. It's a terrifying thought to ponder that in just 11 years from today, a monster like Bismarck Espinosa Martinez could again walk freely among us. I pray that the family of Carla Stefaniak somehow finds a semblance of peace after this. And may the spirit and adventurous soul of Carla rest in eternal peace.